Welcome back, everybody. It's been a while, but I'm back, and I've got some more Linux drama today to share with you. So this piece of drama, uh, as it were, is directly from the kernel mailing list. And it comes from someone trying to submit a patch to some of the Rust for Linux abstractions. So we can see here, uh, Danilo Krumrich wrote, since there hasn't been a reply so far, I assume that we're good with maintaining the DMA Rust abstractions separately. And unfortunately, there has been some disagreement between the Rust folks and the rest of the kernel community. And we can see here this response from Christoph Helwig, who is the maintainer um, for the subsystem, who apparently doesn't want to see these changes go in. Quote, No, I'm not. There was an explicit knacked by Christoph Helwig. And I also do not want another maintainer. If you want to make Linux impossible to maintain due to a cross-language code base, do that in your driver so that you have to do it instead of spreading this cancer to core subsystems. Where this cancer explicitly is a cross-language code base and not Rust itself, just to escape the Flame War Brigade. I assume that's supposed to be Flame War. It says Flameware, but let's just say it says Flame War. I also found this post from the kernel mailing list from January 29th when Danilo wrote, I accept that you, won't, you don't want to be involved with Rust in the kernel, which is why we offered to maintain the Rust abstraction layer for the DOMA coherent allocator as a separate component, which it would be anyways, ourselves. And Christoph responded, which doesn't help me a bit. Every additional bit that another language creeps in drastically reduces the maintainability of the kernel as an integrated project. The only reason Linux managed to survive so long is by not having internal boundaries and adding another language completely breaks this. You might not like my answer, but I will do everything I can do to stop this. This is not because I hate Rust. While not my favorite language, it's definitively one of the best new ones, and I encourage people to use it for new projects where it fits. I do not want it anywhere near a huge C code base that I need to maintain. Yikes. So who is this guy, Christoph Helwig, who is blocking uh, these changes? Well, he is a Linux maintainer for several different systems. We can see here on the list of maintainers page uh, from the official kernel documentation. Personality handling. I have no idea what that means. VM alloc. I guess something to do with virtual memory allocation. Config FS. DMA mapping helpers. I think this is the one that's relevant to this particular case. Free VFX file system. NVMe driver. And NVMe target driver. So it seems like Kristoff is against the idea of the Linux code base having two different languages for core systems. And whatever that second language is, whether it's Rust or whether it's something else entirely, I don't know, C++, Zig, you name it. He doesn't want a second language uh, within the core systems just because it requires everyone who works on the kernel to then have that full toolchain installed and have everything working for both of those languages. And to some extent, I can kind of see where he's coming from. Working with code bases that have multiple requirements in terms of tool chains and in terms of things you need to set up can be a bit annoying, right? It's just more setup that you have to do. It's more things that you have to make sure you have up to date and have everything configured correctly. But at the same time, it does seem like Rust is here to stay. And to be honest, I don't see a world where Rust just goes away and is completely removed from the Linux kernel, at least in the near future. Perhaps in the long future, there'll be something else to replace it. But for the time being, it does seem like Rust is here to stay. So where does this leave these patches? Well, unfortunately, there's really nothing that they can do, right? The patches are written in Rust, and these abstractions are for some of the Rust code within the kernel. So you can't just translate them to C, right? Because, well, this is Rust code. And so if he's going to block this, unfortunately, there's nothing that Danilo can do in order to get him over to his side uh, when it comes to merging these abstractions. It seems like this is a bit of a stalemate. And unfortunately, this isn't the first time that something like this has happened. A few months ago, I didn't make a video about this, but to be honest, I think I should have. The leader of the Rust for Linux project stepped down. So let me read this post from the uh, kernel archive. Hey folks, this is as short a series as one can be, just removing myself as maintainer of the Rust for Linux project. I'm retiring from the project. After almost four years, I find myself lacking the energy and enthusiasm I once had to respond to some of the non-technical nonsense, so it's best to leave it up to those who still have it in them. 
To the Rust for Linux team, thank you, you're great. It has been a pleasure working with you all. The times we spent discussing technical issues, finding ways to address soundness, holes, etc., were something I always enjoyed and looked forward to. I count myself lucky to have collaborated with such a talented and friendly group. I wish all the success to the project. I truly believe that the future of kernels is with memory-safe languages. I am no visionary, but if Linux doesn't internalize this, I'm afraid some other kernel will do to it what it did to Unix. Lastly, I'll leave a small 3 minute 30 second sample for context here. I'll play that in a second. And to reiterate, no one is trying to force anyone to learn Rust, nor prevent refactorings of C code. Thanks, Wedson. And with that, he stepped down from being the maintainer of the Rust for Linux system. And so here's an example of some of the non-technical nonsense that the Rust folks have had to deal with in getting their code integrated into the kernel. Yeah, yeah. We're almost out of time here, and I, I, th I suspect part of the problem here is you're trying to convince everyone to switch over to the religion as pro pro no. promulgated by Rust. And the reality no. is that ain't going to happen because we have 50 plus file systems in Linux. They will not all be instantaneously converted over to Rust. Before that happens, we will continue to refactor C code because we want to make the C code better. If it breaks the Rust bindings, at least for the foreseeable future, the Rust bindings are a second class citizen, and those file systems that depend on the Rust bindings will break, and that is the Rust bindings problem, not the file system community at large problem. And that's going to be true for a long, long time. Okay. And I think we just simply need to accept that, yeah. right? Because the answer, you are not allowed to refactor to the C code because it would break five critical file systems that distros depend upon, is like not but a that wasn't starter, the answer. okay? Wait, wait. So like, we'll see. I, I, I suspect the best thing to do is you to continue maintaining your Rust bindings. Over time, there will be continued C code refactoring, right? Maybe we will start using, you know, uh, R uh, K, K free RCU. If that breaks Rust, we will find out whether or not this concept of encoding huge amounts of semantics into the type system is a good thing or a bad thing. And instead of trying to convince us what is actually correct, let's see what happens in a year or two. And it will either work or it won't, and we will see, more likely, where does the pain get allocated? Because with most of these sort of engineering things, it's almost always a pain allocation question. Okay, so that's a short clip from the Linux Storage and File System and Memory Management and BPF Summit. Uh, a lot of things happening at the summit, apparently. If you want to watch the whole thing, please do, just to make sure that I'm being honest in the way that I am presenting this. But it really just shows that the Rust for Linux folks have had to deal with a lot of this non-technical nonsense for a while now, and I can see why some of them are getting burnt out. And actually, this story was reported on even by, like, mainstream tech media, right? Like, Ars Technica is relatively mainstream when it comes to tech, right? They don't focus on any particular thing, unlike places like LWN that report solely on Linux. And even they uh, actually talked about the Rust in Linux lead retiring rather than having to deal with more non-technical nonsense. So even outside of the Linux sphere, people are kind of getting this impression that the Rust for Linux folks are having to deal with all of this nonsense that unfortunately seems to come from a few maintainers that are just unwilling to change their attitudes and I guess unwilling to accept the fact that Rust, for the most part, is here to stay. And finally, as a bit of schadenfreude, here is a response from Linus to some of the changes that... Here's a response from Linus to some changes that someone wanted to push into the kernel that broke uh, the Rust bindings. Linus, please merge the memory management updates for the 6.14 development cycle. Linus responds, This does not build at all for me. I get... This error that I'm not going to read. When running Rust bind gen, and what seems to be going on is that my version of GCC does support type of unqual, so I end up with config CC has type of unqual equals yes in my kernel config, but I think that bind gen that generates the Rust bindings is based on LLVM and clearly does not understand type of unqual. I guess this is some kind of extension that's implemented only in the GCC compiler. Linus goes on. 
I have Bindchan 0.69.5 on a plain Fedora 40 install in case somebody wants to test. Apparently, few people test Linux Next with Rust enabled, and the reports that I find on LKML were ignored. I do see reports of this failure on LKML from mid-December, so it's not like I'm the first person to ever see this. Anyway, pulled, then unpulled again. Linus. So, at least Linus is taking the bare minimum stance here, which is to not merge code that completely breaks what the existing Rust code in the kernel is doing. So at least that's a start. But hopefully this issue with the maintainers can be resolved. I just don't think it's reasonable for them to entirely block Rust when it's clear that Linus himself is on board with putting it into the kernel and with it being here to stay. But I guess we'll see how it goes. After all those maintainers, you know, they do still have their own jobs to do. And at the end of the day, they have those jobs for a reason because they were the most qualified people at the time. And I guess they still are. So hopefully they can change their views and hopefully the rest for Linux stuff can progress. And so that the Linux operating system can get better for all of us. Thanks for watching.